Invisible Child. One dark and rainy evening, the Moomin family sat around the veranda table, picking over the day's mushroom harvest. The big table was covered with newspapers and in the center of it stood the lighted kerosene lamp. But the corners of the veranda were dark. Little Mai has been picking pepper mushrooms again, Moomin Papa said. Last year she collected flybane. Let's hope she takes to chanterelles next autumn, said Mummy Mama. Or at least to something not actually poisonous. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst, little Mai observed with a chuckle. They continued their work in peaceful silence. Suddenly there were a few light taps on the glass pane in the door. And without waiting for an answer, Tutiki came in and shook the rain off her oilskin jacket. Then she held the door open and called out in the dark. Well, come along. Whom are you bringing? Moomin Troll asked. It's Ninny, Tutiki said. Yes, her name's Ninny. She still held the door open, waiting. No one came. Oh, well, Tutiki said and shrugged her shoulders. If she's too shy, she'd better stay there for a while. She'll be drenched through, said Mummy Mama. Perhaps that won't matter much when one's invisible, Tutiki said, and sat down by the table. The family stopped working and waited for an explanation. You all know, don't you, that if people are frightened very often, they sometimes become invisible, Tortiki said, and swallowed a small egg mushroom that looked like a little snowball. Well, this ninny was frightened the wrong way by a lady who had taken care of her without really liking her. I've met this lady, and she was horrid. Not the angry sort, you know, which would have been understandable, no, she was the icily ironical kind. What's ironical? Moomin Troll asked. Well, imagine that you slip on a rotten mushroom and sit down on the basket of newly picked ones, Tortiki said. The natural thing for your mother would be to be angry. But no, she isn't. Instead, she says very coldly, I understand that's your idea of a graceful dance, but I'd thank you not to do it in people's food. Something like that. How unpleasant, Moomin Troll said. Yes, isn't it, replied Tortiki. This was the way this lady used to talk. She was ironic all day long, every day. And finally, the kids started to turn pale and fade around the edges, and less and less was seen of her. Last Friday, one couldn't catch sight of her at all. The lady gave her away to me, and she said she really couldn't take care of relatives she couldn't even see. And what did you do to that lady? Little Mai asked with bulging eyes. Did you bash her head? That's of no use with the ironic sort, Tortiki said. I took Nini home with me, of course, and now I've brought her here for you to make her visible again. There was a slight pause. Only the rain was heard rustling along over the veranda roof. Everybody stared at Tortiki and thought for a while. Does she talk? Mummy Papa asked. No, but the lady has hung a small silver bell around her neck so that one can hear her where she is. Tortiki rose and opened the door again. Nini, she called out in the dark. The cool smell of autumn crept in from the garden and a square of light threw itself on the wet grass. 
After a while, there was a slight tinkle outside, rather hesitantly. The sound came up the steps and stopped. A bit above the floor, a small silver bell was seen hanging in the air on a black ribbon. Nini seemed to have a very thin neck. All right, Tutiki said. Now here's your new family. They're a bit silly at times, but rather decent, generally speaking. G give the kid a chair, Moomin Papa said. Does she know how to pick mushrooms? I really know nothing at all about Nini, Tutiki said. I've only brought her here and told you what I know. Now I have a few other things to attend to. Please look in some day, won't you? And let me know how you're getting along. Cheerio! When Tutiki had gone, the family sat quiet and silent, looking at the empty chair and the silver bell. After a while, one of the chanterelles slowly rose from a heap on the table. Invisible paws picked it clean from needles and earth. Then it was cut to pieces and the pieces drifted away and laid themselves in the basin. Another mushroom sailed up from the table. Thrilling, little Mai said with awe. Try to give her something to eat. I'd like to know if you can see the food when she swallows it. How on earth does one make her visible again? Moomin Papa said worriedly. Should we take her to the doctor? I don't think so, said Moomin Mama. I believe she wants to be invisible for a while. Tortiki said she's shy. Better leave the kid alone until something turns up. And so it was decided. The eastern attic room happened to be unoccupied, so Mumi Mama made Nini a bed there. The silver bell tinkled along after her upstairs and reminded Mumi Mama of the cat that once had lived with them. At the bedside, she laid out the apple the glass of juice and three striped pieces of candy that everybody in the house was given at bedtime. Then she lit a candle and said, Now have a good sleep, Nini. Sleep as late as you can. There'll be tea for you in the morning any time you want. And if you happen to get a funny feeling or if you want anything, just come downstairs and tinkle. Moomin Mama saw the quilt raise itself to form a very small mound. A dent appeared in the pillow. She went downstairs again to her own room and started looking through her granny's old notes about infallible household remedies. Evil eye, melancholy, colds, no, there didn't seem to be anything suitable. Yes, there was. Towards the end of the notebook, she found a few lines written down at the time when Granny's hand was already rather shaky. If people start getting misty and difficult to see. Good. Mumi Mama read the recipe, which was rather complicated, and started at once to mix the medicine for little Ninny. The bell came tinkling downstairs, one step at a time, with a small pause between each step. Moomin Troll had been waiting for it all morning. But the silver bell wasn't the exciting thing. That was the pause. Nini's paws were coming down the steps. They were very small, with anxiously bunched toes. Nothing else of Nini was visible. It was very odd. Moomin Troll drew back behind the porcelain stove and stared bewitchedly at the paws that passed him on their way to the veranda. Now she served herself some tea. 
the cup was raised in the air and sank back again. She ate some bread and butter and marmalade. Then the cup and saucer drifted away to the kitchen, were washed and put away in the closet. You see, Nini was a very orderly little child. Moomin Troll rushed out in the garden and shouted, Mama, she's got paws. You can see her paws. I thought as much, Moomin Mama was musing, where she sat high in the apple tree. Granny knew a thing or two. Now when the medicine starts to work, we'll be on the right track. Splendid, said Moomin Papa, and better still when she shows her snout. It makes me feel sad to talk to people who are invisible and who never answer me. Hush, dear, Moomin Mama said warningly. Ninny's paws were standing in the grass among the fallen apples. Hello, Ninny, shouted little Mai. You've slept like a hog. When are you going to show your snout? You must look a fright if you wanted to be invisible. Shut up. Moomin Troll whispered, she'll be hurt. He went running up to Ninny and said, never mind little Mai, she's hard boiled. You're really safe here among us. Don't even think about that horrid lady. She can't come here and take you away. In a moment, Ninny's paws had faded away and become nearly indistinguishable from the grass. Darling, you are an ass, said Moomin Mama. You can't go about reminding the kid about those things. Now pick apples and don't talk rubbish. They all picked apples. After a while, Ninny's paws became clearer again and climbed one of the trees. It was a beautiful autumn morning. The shadows made one snout a little chilly, but the sunshine felt nearly like summer. Everything was wet from the night's rain and all colours were strong and clear. When all the apples were picked or shaken down, Mumi and Papa carried the biggest apple mincer out in the garden and they started making apple cheese. Moomin Troll turned the handle, Moomin Mama fed the mincer with apples and Moomin Papa carried the filled jars to the veranda. Little Mai sat in a tree singing the big apple song. Suddenly there was a crash. On the garden path appeared a large heap of apple cheese, all prickly with glass splinters. Besides the heap, one could see Ninny's paws rapidly fading away. Oh, said Moomin Mama, that was the jar we used to give to the bumblebees. Now we needn't carry it down to the field. And Granny always said that if you want the earth to grow something for you, then you have to give it a present in the autumn. Ninny's paws appeared back again and above them a pair of spindly legs came to view. Above the legs one could see the faint outline of a brown dress hem. I can see legs, cried Moomin Troll. Congrats, said Little Mai, looking down out of her tree. Not bad, but only the Groke knows why you must wear snuff brown. Moomin Mama nodded to herself and sent a thought to her granny and the medicine. Nini padded along after them all day. They became used to the tinkle and no longer thought Nini very remarkable. By the evening, they had nearly forgotten about her. When everybody was in bed, Moomin Mama took out a rose pink shawl of hers and made it into a little dress. When it was ready, she carried it upstairs to the eastern attic room and cautiously laid it out on a chair. Then she made a broad hair ribbon out of the material left over. Moomin Mama was enjoying herself tremendously. It was just like sewing doll's clothes again. And the funny thing was that one didn't know if the doll had yellow or black hair. The following day, Ninny had a dress on. She was visible up to her neck. And when she came down to morning tea, she bobbed and bipped. Thank you all so very much. 
The family felt very embarrassed and no one found anything to say. Also, it was hard to know where to look when one talked to Nini. One, of course, tried to look a bit above the bell where Nini was supposed to have her eyes. But then one found oneself staring at some of the visible things further down instead, and it gave one an impolite feeling. Moomin Papa cleared his throat. <coughs> Uh, uh, we're happy to see, he started, uh, that we see more of Nini today. Uh, the more we see, uh, the happier we are. Little Mai gave a laugh and banged the table with her spoon. Fine that you've started talking, she said. Hope you have something to say. Do you know any good games? No, Nini piped. But I've heard about games. Moomin Troll was delighted. He decided to teach Nini all the games he knew. After coffee, all three of them went down to the river to play. Only Nini turned out to be quite impossible. She bobbed and nodded and very seriously replied, quite, and how funny, and of course but it was clear to all that she played only from politeness and not to have fun. Run, run, can't you? Little Mai cried. Or can't you even jump? Nini's thin legs dutifully ran and jumped. Then she stood still again with arms dangling. The empty dress over the bell was looking strangely helpless. Do you think anybody likes that? Little Mai cried. Haven't you any life in you? Do you want a biff on the nose? Rather not, Nini piped humbly. She can't play, mumbled Moomin Troll. She can't get angry, Little Mai said. That's what's wrong with her. Listen you, Little Mai continued and went up to Nini with a menacing look. You'll never have a face of your own until you've learned to fight. Believe me. Yes, of course, Nini replied, cautiously backing away. There was no further turn for the better. At last they stopped trying to teach Nini to play. She didn't like funny stories either. She never laughed at the right places. She never laughed at all, in fact. This had a depressing effect on the person who told the story. And so she was left alone to herself. Days went by and Nini was still without a face. They became accustomed to seeing her pink dress marching along behind Mumi Mama. As soon as Mumi Mama stopped, the silver bell also stopped. And when she continued her way, the bell began to tinkle again. A bit above the dress, a big rose pink bow was bobbing in, the, in thin air. Moomin Mama continued to treat Nini with Granny's medicine, but nothing further happened. So after some time, she stopped the treatment, thinking that many people had managed all right before without a head. And besides, perhaps Nini wasn't very good looking. Now everyone could imagine for themselves what she looked like, which can often brighten up a relationship. One day, the family went off through the wood down to the beach. They were going to pull the boat up for winter. Nini came tinkling behind as usual, but when they came in view of the sea, she suddenly stopped. Then she lay down on her stomach in the sand and started to whine. What's come over Nini? Is she frightened? asked Moomin Papa. Perhaps she hasn't seen the sea before, Moomin Mama said. She stopped and exchanged a few whispering words with Nini. Then she straightened up again and said, No, it's the first time. Nini thinks the sea's too big. Of all the silly kids, Little Mai started, but Moomin Mama gave her a severe look and said, don't be a silly kid yourself. Now let's pull the boat ashore. 
They went out on the landing stage to the bathing hut where Tutiki lived and knocked on the door. Hello, Tutiki said. How's the invisible child? There's only her snout left to appear, Mumin Papa replied. At the moment, she's a bit startled, but it'll pass. Can you lend us a hand with the boat? Certainly, Tutiki said. While the boat was pulled ashore and turned keel upwards, Nini had padded down to the water's edge and was standing immobile on the wet sand. They left her alone. Mumi Mama sat down on the landing stage and looked down into the water. Dear me, how cold it looks, she said. And then she yawned a bit and added that nothing exciting had happened for weeks. Moomin Papa gave Moomin Troll a wink, pulled a horrible face and started to steal up to Moomin Mama from behind. Of course, he didn't really intend to push her in the water, as he had done many times when she was young. Perhaps he didn't even want to startle her, but just to amuse the kids a little. But before he reached her, a sharp cry was heard a pink streak of light shot over the landing stage and Moomin Papa let out a scream and dropped his hat into the water. Nini had sunk her small invisible teeth into Moomin Papa's tail and they were sharp. Good work, cried little Mai. I couldn't have done it better myself. Nini was standing on the landing stage she had a small, snub nose, angry face below a red tangle of hair. She was hissing at Moomin Papa like a cat. Don't you dare push her into that horrible big sea, she cried. I see her, I see her, shouted Moomin Troll. She's sweet. Sweet my eye, said Moomin Papa, inspecting his bitten tail. She's the silliest, nastiest, badly brought up as child I've ever seen, with or without head. He knelt down on the landing stage and tried to fish for his hat with a stick. And in some mysterious way, he managed to tip himself over and tumble in on his head. He came up at once, standing safely on the bottom with his snout above water and his ears filled with mud. Oh dear, Nini was shouting. How, oh, how great. Oh, how funny. The landing stage shook with her laughter. I believe she's never laughed before, Tutiki said wonderingly. You seem to have changed her. She's even worse than little Mai. But the main thing is that one can see her, of course. And it's all thanks to Granny. Mummy Mama said.